my name is Rachel and I'm here today to film my book haul for October. This is going to be quite a long video because it was my birthday in October so I have a lot of books to show you. There's definitely over 10. I'm going to get straight into the books that I got. So we're going to start with books that I pre-ordered because I only pre-ordered two books. Actually I pre-ordered three books and Snot Girl still hasn't come and I'm fuming about it but they keep moving the publishing date so I'm like mmm. But anyway, we'll just, we won't deal with that. But yeah, I got two books that I pre-ordered, so we'll talk about those first. A Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell, which I think I gave four stars if I'm right. This is the sequel to Carry On, and it is a middle book, which I wish I'd known when I read it, but she had announced it already. So literally like I finished it and within like half a day, I knew that there was another one. So I wasn't too bad about it. I know some people have been saying like they would have enjoyed it a lot more if they'd have known that there was gonna be a third book because the ending is quite dramatic, but I wasn't too bad. I'm not gonna say too much about what this is about because obviously it is a second book, but we are continuing to follow Baz and Simon and like what happens after you defeat the big bad. It's like that kind of a storyline. I really liked it. I just filmed a video and I like made a little collection of books everywhere around me and I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna do that again. That's why I'm propping this up. We'll put it there. I don't know if it's in shot or not, but we'll see. The other book that I pre-ordered is one that I can't believe I haven't read yet, but it's one of those where like, you know, when you're so excited that you just, I, I don't know if the pressure that I'm putting on it, like I'm putting too much pressure on it. So it's kind of scaring me. I don't know if I can read it yet, um, <laughs> but it is Find Me by Andrea Esterman and this is the sequel to Call Me By Your Name, which I adored. I will leave a link to my review of Call Me By Your Name because I literally just gushed for like 15 minutes by that book and I adore it so much. I reread it at some point because I was so excited for this coming out so I'm definitely prepared to read it but I don't know if I can yet. I really want to read it in November or at least before the end of the year. We will see. I again don't want to say too much about what this is about because it's a sequel but we do go back to older characters from the first book apparently and like see where their lives are at later on. My mum just bought a car. Oh my god, just bought a car. Oh my god, can you buy some milk as well? Because <laughs> I'm on my last tea. Next, <laughs> we're going to go on to books that I got for my birthday. I have books that I got with birthday money. That's a different pile. But we have books that I actually got as presents, like given to me, unwrapped, that kind of present. So the first one was from one of my university friends who knows me very, very well. Um, and this is Pocket RuPaul Wisdom, witty quotes and wise words from a drag superstar, which obviously I would love if you've watched my channel at all, you will know I'm obsessed with RuPaul's Drag Race. This is just like literally just loads of quotes about things that RuPaul has said. Put that one there, like, Queen needs a higher level, you know? This is from my auntie and it is an antique book and it is Test of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. This was published, let's see if it's got a publishing date in it. Sometimes they do, just sometimes they don't. Oh, this was published in 1925. I do collect antique books. You can actually see them now. I rearranged all my books the other day. Um, these are all like antique books that I have. I love collecting them. I just, it makes me happy. One of my other uni friends got me The Institute by Stephen King because she knows I'm a big Stephen King fan. This follows a institute where children are taken and they are tested there because they have like exceptional abilities. That's all I really know, but it sounds really, really cool. And I just, I love Stephen King. I want all of his books anyway, because I just enjoy him as a writer. So I know I will get to this at some point and I'm very excited to have a copy of it and it's very well published. I think this blue is so pretty. Oh, I didn't get given that as a present. That was, that was my own find. Let's not give anyone else credit for that. The last book I got as a present was this by order of the Peaky Blinders book from my parents because I absolutely love Peaky Blinders. However, I haven't been able to open this or look at anything in it because I'm scared of spoilers because I've only watched like two episodes of the newest season that was on because I was watching it and then my parents finally started watching Peaky Blinders and I was like, I'll rewatch it with you. I've been rewatching it with them and I think they're up to season three now. Put off watching the last series because I thought, well, I'll just rewatch it through with them and then watch the last ones. But the only problem is I can't go anywhere in this book because what if I see a spoiler? I don't know what's in here, but I'm really happy to have this. I absolutely love Peaky Blinders. I just think it's a great show. I'm just gonna quickly mention this one because I had it in that pile and I wanna take the stickers off it. Haven't took the stickers off it because I just, like, I want you to see that I got this book 
so cheap and it just makes me so ridiculously bloody happy i cannot even so it is almost love by louise o'neill if you know anything about me you know that i have been on a big louise o'neill kick this year absolutely love her and this is my favorite book by her but i listened to it on audiobook so i didn't have a copy i go into waterstones they've got a markdown section and this book is there number one i'm like oh my god i'm gonna buy that immediately number two i'm like oh my god it's a beautiful hard rock edition that's amazing number three it's half price amazing again and then number four what is some special edition includes exclusive content the exclusive content is an interview with louise o'neill at the back and some questions that she's answered and we got number five another great thing this is signed by louise o'neill how cool is that so obviously i was very excited because i already love this book it's already one of my favorite books of the year I finally have a copy of it and it's signed and it is a beautiful hardback and it was really cheap it was half price so i'm just like oh i'm so excited so i've been waiting to do this video so i can take these stickers off and just have this beautiful beautiful book that i love so much very excited about this this follows a girl called sarah she is basically in a relationship with a man now but we go back to a relationship that she was in in the past and she talks about her memories of that relationship and it was a really toxic relationship that kind of got into her head so it means that she kind of fixates on it and it affects her relationships now and oh i just i love it so much i think it's so well written i think the characters are so well done these hardbacks are working really well like let me just slide out of the way look how beautiful they look here so then we have the books that i got with my birthday money so i got like money from aunties and stuff like that so the first one is stop worrying start writing how to overcome fear self-doubt and procrastination by sarah painter this does what it says on the tin the reason that i picked this one up is that i've been struggling with being able to work and write outside of like my actual work and my job because i will come home and it's already dark and it's just depressing and yeah it's just sad but i have actually been doing some more creative stuff recently so i'm very happy with that and yeah i've not started reading this book yet but i'm guessing it'll be helpful i hate procrastinating and i love being productive so this is just to help me with that because productivity is my life goal then i bought two books by claire lyden so if you are of the lesbian persuasion or the girls liking girls persuasion you might know who Claire Lydon is. I did not, I hadn't really heard of her before and then I found one of her books on Audible and I bought it and I started listening to it and I didn't really like the narrator but I was like, I like this story and where it's going so far. So I decided to get rid of the audiobook, get my credit back and just buy the book physically. So that book was London Calling and this is about a girl who moves back to London because she was living somewhere else. She moves back, she's just broken up with someone because they were cheating on her. She moves back into her parents' house and she meets a girl that she likes but apparently there's like her old girlfriends coming back into it as well and all stuff like that. It sounds amazing and I'm very excited for it because I know that I was already liking the beginning as well so excited for this this is like lesbian romance kind of genre and then they also picked up by her you're my kind and this sounds really really good and this is like one book whereas this is a series it makes me think of like shopaholic it's that kind of a like long series so i'm feeling like i should read this one first because it's a standalone but this one in the back says justine thomas and maddie kind met at university and with a couple most likely everybody said so that is until maddie left without saying goodbye 10 years later the pair are reunited at a friend's funeral and now justine can't shake maddie from her life but why is she back why did she disappear more importantly is she interested in the whole cake or just one last slice of justine god that sounds cheesy but this sounds like the exact same blurb as persuasion by jane austen which i haven't read yet need to read i'm very excited for both of these because who doesn't love a lesbian romance i love them very much so we're excited then i got those ones online i got them off amazon they don't always have the best lgbt rep book wise in bookshops unless they're like the most popular ones which is quite annoying so you normally do have to get them online so i got those online and i also got this one this is called say you'll love me again by kiki archer now kiki archer has won a diva award 
and is said to be the mistress of chiclet romance for women of all ages and inclinations, which is cool. I only know what a diva award is because I know Rose and Rosie won one. Lesbian points for me. But this one on the back says, do you know how to keep a secret? 23 year old piano teacher Sophie does and it's kept her hidden for the past five years. But now she's gone and broken her golden rule, never let anyone see you. Jazz, a wild and carefree comedian, does more than see Sophie. But that's because your soul mates the stranger you recognize, right? With the woman she used to be threatening to surface, will Sophie succumb to the pull of passion and risk everything for jazz? Or will she hide from happiness to avoid further intertwining their lives, which might ultimately cause the unraveling of everything? I'm guessing she'll risk everything and they'll get together. I can take the piss out of these books and call them cheesy and hate on them because I still like them at the end of the day and I still read them, so it's fine. I'm excited for it. The next book I got, is the last one that's gay. There is one more gay one, but it's the last one that's gay that I bought myself. So it is Birthday by Meredith Russo, love story, 18 years in the making. I wanted to get this because Meredith Russo wrote If I Was Your Girl, which I read this year, last year. I have no idea when I read it, but I really, really enjoyed it. And so I was really excited to pick this one up. It does have the sprayed edges, which I'm not a fan of. I think it makes books look cheap and I don't like it, but it's fine, we're getting through it. This is about two people who have basically grown up together and their birthdays are on the same day. And so it only takes place on the birthday. We only meet them on the birthday in the story. And I think we just like see their history on the birthday every year. And I think maybe they get together, I don't know. I've not read it. Um, but it sounds like, I think it's a short story and it might be in that, um, like a Christmas anthology. There's a story in there where it always takes place on New Year's Eve and it sounds really similar to that. Then I just remembered that I forgot to get another book. So I will be right back. Next three books I got, I've actually mentioned on my channel because I mentioned them for my November TBR. So I'm not gonna mention them too much, but they are French Milk, Kid Gloves and Something New, all by Lucy Nisley. I love Lucy Nisley, she makes non-fiction graphic novels which is something I really really enjoy and I have read French Milk so far this is a, like a travel diary thing of her going around Paris and living there for six weeks which I love Paris so this was great. I haven't read this one yet this is Kid Gloves Nine Months of Careful Chaos all about her being pregnant and I have started this one I'm up to chapter two wedding season and this is something new Tales from a Makeshift Bride by Nancy Nisley and it's all about her being engaged and trying to make her wedding and her engagement her own and not just like the same shit that everyone else does that kind of vibe and I'm really really enjoying it so far it's very cutesy and I love it so I bought those for myself I filled everything behind me so display wise I don't know where we go from here but I've only got three books left so maybe it'll work out the next book I picked up was Lost at Sea by Brian Lee O'Malley so I did a live show with the Lom Gnome who I will like insert that or link it or whatever if you want to go and see it. It was about Scott Pilgrim. I really enjoyed doing that and I enjoyed like rereading the whole Scott Pilgrim series again and I love Snot Girl and I love Seconds and I was like why have I not read his debut book? So I bought it and I read it and I really really enjoyed it. This is about a girl who's kind of traveling across Canada probably because he's Canadian I don't know Um, she's traveling across a space <laughs> and she's traveling with her friends and she thinks a cat has stolen her soul. It's all about romantic relationships, friendships, and yeah, cats. Not a big fan of cats, so didn't love that part of it, but if you were a cat person, can imagine you'd love this book. If there were as many dogs in this book as there were cats, it would have been five stars. So I imagine it's very good for cat people. But anyway, we read that, we got that, it was great. We have something I was very excited about and I didn't realize it was out already, and it is, Finding Home Volume 2, The Healer. So this is by Harry Connor and this is a webcomic and I always read it on Tapas when it comes out. I really, really enjoy it. I'm not really gonna tell you what this one's about because obviously this is volume two, but the story in general is about two guys who are traveling together and there's a very slow burn romance going on, but there's also some mental health and PTSD going on that kind of keeps them from easily getting together and that's why it's so slow burn. And I loved this because it went further than where the webcomics got up to by about like a hundred pages. So it was really good because I got like a lot of new content and I just loved it. And just in general, like I think his art style is absolutely wonderful. So I loved reading this one. The next book is the last book. It is Louis Undercover by Isabel Arsenal and Fanny Britt. So these are the two people behind Jane the Fox and Me, which I adore. 
And I saw this in a Waterstones and was like, oh my God, I didn't know they had another book together. I'm going to buy it. And I'm so glad that I did. This is a lot longer than Jane the Fox and Me. I don't want to say I enjoyed it more because I, Jane the Fox and Me has a really special place in my heart. But I think this explores themes in a lot more detail and it has a lot more to it. Like, it's a lot more substance. And I loved it so much. In this, we follow a little boy and his family. So he has a brother and his mum and dad, but his mum and dad have split up. You slowly realise that they've broken up because his dad has a drinking problem but that there is no other reason for them to have broken up and actually they do very much still love each other and it's kind of it's very difficult to watch them sort of go back and forth on like getting back together and then him drinking again and all that sort of stuff it is a hard read at times but it is absolutely wonderful and his brother is so cute and i just love the illustrations so much they are so beautiful and lovely I don't know what i gave it did i give it four stars or five stars i honestly do not remember but would highly recommend it and i loved it very 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 much so yeah they are all the books displayed behind me that I got in October for birthdays and just for treating myself and pre-orders and all those lovely things. So yeah, if you have read any of these books, if you want to read any of these books and want to talk to me about them, please do in the comments down below. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!